Sarah Good was certainly one of those aforementioned pains in the ass. It's kind of interesting. I watched the, the Witch again last night to kind of get more context and remind myself just how creepy New England is. Mm -hmm. And uh, it is crazy. The idea that she truly was outside of society. Sarah like, Osborne. They leave. They literally make them go. So they yeah. just go. Because also I found out reading a little bit about the structure of Salem Village is that back in the day they used to have all the farms in one collected area and all of the living areas in one collecting area. Right? Like, so they, like it's a town. Like it's a town. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the idea is you had them all close, right, so that everybody could collectively work together, that everybody right. that lived in the houses would collectively work the land and share amongst themselves. Eventually, everyone realized, I'm sick of doing this. I hate you. Right, I hate my neighbor. I yeah. want to go live over there where those nice trees are. Right. And then they go set it over there. And eventually, the longer you're over there, everyone's like, I think that bitch is a fucking witch. Right. Like, they just like, look her over there. She only, she's staring at my rutabagas. Why wouldn't she mm. want to hang out with us? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't understand. I don't she don't must understand. be weird. She don't want to yeah. hang out with us. You notice that the wheat is higher than it was yesterday? Erga, <laughs> Um, also, Sarah Osborne, she would love I was stuck in traffic today, which was infuriating. She would have loved the man I was behind because he had a funny bumper sticker. And it said, think, it's not illegal yet. Not yet. Not yet. So not Sarah yet. Osborne, she would have thought outside the bun, too. She probably may have laughed at that bumper sticker, which, in my opinion, makes her a witch. <laughs> Is it wrong if I take the side of all the priests and yeah. pastors? <laughs> we'll get oh, there. Look, okay. Yeah, yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. No, yeah, yeah. It's, it's wrong. Yeah, it's, it's a bad take. It's okay, a real bad take. Fantastic. Well, Sarah Good was a poor, alienated woman from a family who had fallen on such hard times that they were near vagrancy by the time the accusations began. Mm. While her family had once been successful, circumstances meant that she and her husband had resorted to begging, doing it in a way that is specific to those who once held higher status. Hey, I used to be rich. <laughs> Don't we all want to see me be rich again? I would love that. <laughs> Well, for example, if someone gave Sarah good charity, she would make the giver feel uncomfortable, as if the gift was an insult. But if the gift was too little, good would feel equally disgusted. Oh, God. It's like you can see this fucking bitch. Oh, this is like when you try to give somebody who's unhomed in... Uh in New York some food and they're like I'm vegan and it's I like you know what that, <laughs> I had that happen to me I remember one time I gave a sandwich to a poor dude on the street and he's like I don't eat bacon I know it's like <laughs> I, I think that your lord would not care right now what you eat Mm -hmm. uh, or his lord would t look at it as the ultimate test and would condemn him to hell forever for failing. Dude, now you're in the Puritan mindset. <laughs> yeah, now I'm thinking like a minister. Now dude, I've been thinking like a minister since I was six years old, dude, and fucking oh. I first got the fear of hell put inside of me deep where it, it still lives to this day. Hey, nice. we, this book, I can't really talk about it enough how much I love it. Europe's Inner Demons by Norman Cohn. And a part of it is constantly that. It's this whole idea that even the idea you would fall for one of these so-called human frailties, like the idea of like being horny or or wanting something else that somebody has, yeah. right? Being envious of something. But hell, all of that is just a fucking trick, bro. Yeah. And that mm -hmm. God purposely punishes you to make you want all the extra shit. He makes you want mm -hmm. it, want it, because then you just yearning for it shows why you should be at the bottom of the fucking pile, dude, because you <laughs> fucking didn't get it. Whammies! Nothing but whammies for <laughs> you. Nothing but whammies. I mean, literally, it would just be an LT, lettuce, tomato sandwich without the bacon. Um, that's you a just, salad. With this that's just a you salad. cut up the bread, that's the croutons. Yeah. No, yeah, it's not bad. Well, as it happened. Well, it is bad. Uh, <laughs> you want the bacon. Bad. Henry's yeah, trying to bacon the, scam people. Yeah, you want, you the, want bacon. the bacon. Yeah, I can do a bacon flip if I want. Mm. It's a, whatever. Mm. Well, uh, well, <laughs> as it, <laughs> well, as it happened, after Reverend Samuel Paris gave charity to Sarah Good one day at the start of his daughter and niece's afflictions, mm. he noticed that Sarah walked off muttering something under her breath. But instead of simply thinking, wow, what a bitch, mm. Samuel Paris decided that, yes, his girls had gotten worse after mm. Sarah Good had come by his home. And the muttering that he heard, it must have been a curse. It's the devil's oath. Whoa. Meanwhile, she was just going like, cheap ass fucking minister. <laughs> like, that's like all she was doing. <laughs> yeah, that's it. And to top it all off, Sarah Good was considered untrustworthy in this community of British immigrants because her father had been a highly successful innkeeper nicknamed the Frenchman. The Frenchman! Whoa. He invented two in the pink, one in the stink. Isn't that <laughs> something? Uh, which is really very incredible. And then we, we covered it Dois a little bit. Dois in la rose. 
Isn't that something? Inquisition? I think that you think that that's tradition from Tevia. I always think of Tevia. It's one of my favorite fake sugars. I fucking hate it. I'm going to fucking walk away, dude. I just got two hours and 15 minutes left. Oh, but that was Sarah Good. The other accused Sarah, Sarah Osborne, had done nothing more than make some unconventional life choices. Years before, she had scandalized the community by purchasing the contract of an indentured servant because she was in love. That's she hot. married him after the purchase, but because these things just weren't done, the community looked down on her for this decision. How hot is it to be husband and present? Oh. And you, <laughs> you're the purchased one, and you show up and you're like, mm. Ooh. And you have to wear yeah. your little like your tunic with the extra holes to the side to go get all the firewood and be like, mm -hmm. oh no, I spilled all this firewood. And you, go, yeah. oh, and you like drop down, and that wife just sits there watching that husband get all dusty. Yeah. I love yeah, this yeah. Sabrowski revisionist history of American history. <laughs> this is great. You, yeah, don't, you'll be you'll after they get rid of CRT, you're gonna be taking over for most curriculum. I hate. I believe, <laughs> I believe fair and just. <laughs> and I'll just say, humans should be damned, and yeah. we're a virus on this rock. Yeah. America, the sexy years. Mm. <laughs> well, as a result of thinking outside of societal norms just the slightest bit, Sarah Osborne was in prime position to be accused of witchcraft. However, in an example of just how cruel and uncaring people can be when they're scared and looking for a scapegoat, Sarah Osborne was completely bedridden at the time of her accusation. Colonial Massachusetts sick. And she was unable to leave her house under her own power. I think that we could all tell that this woman has the ungodly powers of a witch. I mean, she can't get out of bed. No, we will all see as I show you now. As I grab her bedclothes and I spin her from the bed as she, she <laughs> launches in triumph into the devil's... Oh, she is just on the ground. Yeah. <laughs> oh, well... Let's she fucking more, hang her anyway. Honestly, what a waste of time. Let's hang her anyway. She'd have more power, <laughs> I think, if she was a witch. Yeah, and that didn't stop the good people of Salem from actually dragging her from her bed to <laughs> publicly accuse her of witch tr you witchcraft. You can get up, get yeah. up. Do witches okay. get sick? Ah, uh, I guess. You get or sick maybe of the she hassle of society. I agree with that. <laughs> she could also be faking it. You never know. So you never know what happens. You never know, you okay. never know what happens to these people, yeah. Now, Osborne and Good held at least one, if not many, of the characteristics that made a person susceptible to witchcraft accusations in the 17th century. They were outside of society. They wanted to be outside of society. They refused to show deference to the superiors in the existing order of things. They'd moved around a lot for whatever reason hmm. and or their social rank had fallen. And so, since Sarah Good and Sarah Osborne met at least a few of these criteria, and they were openly suspected by those of higher social rank, Samuel Paris's niece and daughter named the two Sarahs as their tormentors. No! And once the daughter and niece did accuse two more women, the other girls mentioned at the end of the last episode followed suit, specifically 12-year-old Ann Putnam Jr. She's a hard-ass bitch, that little girl. <laughs> she's 12. <laughs> she's intense. I guess she's Colonial yeah. Williamsburg 12. Well, this whole yeah. episode is filled with very scary little girls. Mm. It is yeah. filmed with, I'd be like, I saw the devil in the window. He looked a lot Jesus. like you. That's and, scary. Yeah, dude. It's all of them. It's a yeah. whole town of every, the orphans. Every single one. Oh, no. I saw Goody Proctor taking a woman and roasted her on a spit oh, for four shit. hours long. When the fate was dripping in on the old devil's face. How do they all sound like <laughs> Julia Childs? <laughs> <laughs> well, Ann Putnam Jr. said that the specter of Sarah Good was visiting her and pinching her. But more importantly, Putnam Jr. said that the specter was trying to get her to sign what the afflicted had started calling the Devil's Book. Yes. <laughs> and that's why a lot of times you'll see the devil hanging outside of various movie sets or hotels oh. where the movie star stays because he's constantly looking for others to sign the Devil's <laughs> Book. He's not going to get Keanu, I'll tell you that much. Look at this signature I have for Hugh Grant. Ooh. Seven dollars on eBay. Oh, fantastic. Yeah, it's just another nefarious page from the Devil's Book. I love that. And here is the signature I got at Disney World from a young Aladdin. <laughs> He's a, yes. Aladdin. He's actually not the genie. 
Isn't that something? Oftentimes, people think Aladdin is the genie. They don't. No, yeah, they no do. one's ever thought no, that. No, I would no never do that. that I would never complain genie. that. And that is why I am the owner of the devil's uh. book. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> Well, as we mentioned last episode, the Puritans were a mercantile people, and contracts were a big part of their lives. So it made sense that one of the touchstones of the Salem story was the so-called Devil's Book, where people could make their mark signifying a formal yet temporary covenant with Satan, much like an indentured servant contract. Yeah, man. Uh, you can do a lease to own with Satan for your soul. So yeah. it's... it's Ah, uh, it yeah, it's a rent to own. That's a good. Point. It is, yeah. and mm -hmm. it's. But you know, again, this is a formula that harkens back to all, all, or or all accuse organizations with Satan or contractual obligations right. with Satan. There is that has been around for a fucking ever. Like yeah. it's it's really strange because there's something about it again. The human need to create a kind of a a legal base, a, a form and reality because they are. Constantly, not in good faith, right. using the Satanist argument against people since the year 100. The whole point is to discredit you, but they need to find a legal basis. They need to find a hook that right. they can hang it on. So these are the type of things. They say, ah, but you see, she signed a contract. And mm -hmm. then they're like, where's the contract? Mm, <laughs> geez, but spiritual in nature. Ah, and it's, it's like... But, uh, but the contract does exist, but the contract exists in a place that is very real called the invisible world. Yep. Oh. It's just as real as this world. Well, it's yeah, invisible, Yeah, but it's invisible. Though. It's yeah. invisible. Interesting. <laughs> 